Okay. Welcome back, family, to another episode of the Melanin Wellness Podcast. Today, I am delighted to have an amazing guest on the show. Listen, y'all, when I tell you she is going to help you get your life all the way right, okay? Because, listen, we all need to do that, right? But before we begin, y'all know how we do around here. We always begin every single episode with our 30 seconds of gratitude. And Shai, since you are my guest, allow me to allow you to go first. Please hit us with your 30 seconds of gratitude. So my 30 (laughs) seconds of gratitude is I'm thankful for the very breath that I am breathing. Yes, amen. Yeah, there's moments where it's, Seems like it's shallow just from the, the work responsibilities and things like that. So I'm just thankful and grateful for the very breath that I breathe. Yes. Yes. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. For me, my gratefulness today, I'm coming from a, a gratitude of gratefulness. I'm grateful for inner reflection. There has been a lot of things going on with me and with my family and being able to sit back and truly reflect on my principles, what I stand on, what I stand for has helped to guide me. And so I am so grateful for those things. I say this on every podcast. I'm so grateful for my support team, my family. That's my squad, y'all. I could not do any of what I do without them. And I'm grateful for you, my listeners. Listen, y'all, without y'all, I would just be sitting here talking to myself and so would my guests. Okay, and I'm grateful for my guests because I'm grateful for connecting with like minded people who want to share their their gifts, their offerings that they were put here on planet Earth to share with others, to help others heal and live their very best lives. And y'all. All all right. I know that was more than 60 seconds. I know I always go over 30, 40, 60, 75. But y'all know how it is over here. I I always tell y'all, you can never be too grateful because at the end of the day, when you're operating from a space of gratitude, you cannot live in negativity because the two simply cannot coexist in the same space. Now, with that being said today, y'all, we are going to get it going. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing to you Miss Shy White. She is the speaker of life. I can't wait to hear more about that. She is a mental health professional, a certified holistic life coach, and an aromatherapist. Y'all know that's that's my thing right there. I've read her bio, and I know all about her, but you all do not. So, Shy, please introduce yourself to my audience. Tell them where you're from, where you live, what, what you want them to know. Okay. All right. So, I am Shy. Um, born and raised in Bronx, New York, nice. BX, all day, every day. <laughs> the fullest. However, <laughs> last year, um, in February, I relocated to Charlotte, North Carolina. Nice. So we have been coming back and forth to Charlotte since about 2015 when I graduated from um, graduate school. And then we finally made the decision to relocate due to the pandemic and things like that. So I had started that transition since February, like you said, I consider myself a speaker of life. I'm all about wellness. I'm all about empowering women of color. How do we show up? How do we take care of ourselves? How do we love on ourselves? So anything that has to do with promoting wellness, promoting mental health, tapping into taking physical care of ourselves, checking in with our emotions, I'm here for all of it. Yes, me too. Me too. Listen, because I'm going to tell you all something now. If you haven't done your work, you really need to start doing your work because it will change you, not just on the inside, but on the outside. It literally changes who you are as a person and you find your gift, y'all. Okay. So as a mental health professional, Can you tell myself and my audience, what are some of the most common issues that people come in dealing with? Is it childhood trauma? Is it, you know, self-doubt? Is it like, what is the most, some of the most common issues that you see when people from our community come in and sit down and say, I need help? In the capacity that I'm working in now, I want to say is anxiety. Wow. Anxiety and depression are the top two. 
So I don't even want to say now because I don't spend a lot of time with clients. It's more about just doing those intakes. Mm. So it's not really about deep rooted issues. It's about the here and the now, what they've been dealing with and what they have been ignoring for so long. That's right. now starting to overtake their mind, starting to overtake their body. So they're experiencing all of these symptoms and they can't think, they can't sleep at night. You know, they're seeing all of these different changes occurring within themselves. And it's because they've allowed it to go on. And to be honest, a lot of it is stemmed just from stress. Yes. Now I have a question. Is it the anxiety and depression, is it, do you feel like that the pandemic played a role in increasing and raising those levels? In some, in some cases, yes. So there have been some people who will tell you that they were experiencing um, higher levels of those things, but then it's also, I don't know if I would say it's just the pandemic, but because of short, short of staff, Right. Right. So now a lot of people are being you have your home life responsibilities, you have your personal things you want to tend to. But then now, because wherever you may work, they're short staff, you're taking on additional roles. So instead of you just being responsible for what it is you need to do, you're taking on like two or three other roles. And right. you're you know, you might have supervisors and managers with an attitude of, well, this is a part of the job. It's almost like just do it or you can leave you know, right. pretty much. So it's like those type of things. Um, some have been because of COVID. So that whole isolation and, and being home and not having that social part of, oh, you know, at least these eight hours, even if I don't really care too much for my coworkers, I still spend time with them, right? So you yes. have that socialization, you have that, you know, that work environment, and then trying to separate work from home. So now you're working home, and it's like, where's the separation? Yes. Because now when you would be able to leave the office, where are you going to go? You're working yeah. from where, yeah. you, you know, where you live at. So yeah. it's like, what is that separation? So trying to figure out what those boundaries were. And it just has become a ripple effect and a flood because of just the climate that we're in. A lot of people are dealing with a lot of things. And unfortunately, we wait until the last minute or until it gets so heavy and weighted and thick. Before we say, oh, I need help. Now, do you think that that has a lot to do with our community in particular? Because you know, like I know, that in our community, getting help has been so taboo for so many years. You know, it was one of those things that we don't talk about, we don't do, we don't, you know, just pray it away or, you know, you be all right, you, we, we tough, we're built for this. When in all actuality, just getting up and walking outside of the thresholds of our doors each day is enough weight to carry. So do you think that for our people, it has more to do with the fact that it's been taboo for so long. And now it's starting to become a thing where it's like, hey, it's okay to not be okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because that's also the type of family that I come from, right? It's you take care of it. You don't ask for help. You don't ask for support. You just keep going. You just, and it's like, no, wait, I can't just keep going. Like I'm falling apart here. I, I don't even know what to do because I'm just under so much pressure and you just want to keep telling, no, I don't want to keep going. And that's where we have to get to a place to where we are just honest, honest yeah. with ourselves, honest with how we're feeling, honest with what we're going through and be vulnerable and, and, and open enough to say to somebody, I need help. Yeah. Something is wrong. Something is something is happening. I'm having these thoughts, you know, whether, you know, a lot of people are also having thoughts of self-harm. Mm -hmm. Right. So sometimes when we allow these things to fester and to go on, it starts to change. Right. So we can go from just feeling stress and then it turns into like mild anxiety. Then it may lead into depression. Then in the next thing, you know, you're having thoughts of wanting to hurt yourself. This yes. is the reality of where we are. And it's because we're just sitting in it and we're just going on with our day, but we're suffering in the process. Yes. So we have to speak up. We have to say, I need help and be okay with accepting that help. 
Yes. Right. And that's another thing. Yes. So we can be so strong. And so I have it all together that you're not even accepting when someone is trying to extend that support to you. And, you know, are you okay? And, you know, sometimes people will ask you, are you okay? But they don't really want to know the answer. But right. then you do have people who want to know. And then you just like, oh, I'm good. No, sis, you're not good. Yes. And it's okay, to, it's okay to say, <laughs> I ain't good. I ain't got it together. Something going on. And I, I something ain't right. <laughs> right. That part, that part. So can you tell me what made you start to journey into the holistic coaching business, the holistic piece of things? Because, you know, we know when it comes to mental health, oftentimes the first thing that is given is a pill, you know? So what made you start to turn and go toward a more holistic, natural way of things? Um, a part of it has to do with my own personal feelings in regards to medication. Mm -hmm. Um, and just what I learned in graduate school in regards to mental health, I think medication has its place. Yes. Absolutely. Um, and I think depending on what a person's issues and concerns are, medication is needed in conjunction with talk therapy. Right. right. Um, however, just from my own personal preference, you know, what else is out there? And I will say it all started um, that graduate school was the most stressful time of my life. Like everything was falling apart. I just was under so much pressure from full-time student, full-time internship, working full-time as an assistant director, helping lead a department, um, my own family, grandmother with dementia. And it was just all of these things. Mm. And it all started with the breath. And that's why I say that I'm so grateful for it because that's what was brought to my attention was that I wasn't fully breathing. I yes. thought I was, but I wasn't. And when I was in my last year, it was me starting to put things in place for myself to help me manage the stress that I was under. Because when I tell you it was taken over my mind and my body, the stress was taken over. And it started with me, lavender. I love lavender. Ooh. And <laughs> it, it started with lavender. And I was like, this stuff is amazing. Like what's in it? Why does this really work? Why is it really calming me? And then that's how it started. It started with me on my own journey of trying to figure out how do I find balance and how do I regulate everything that I'm experiencing internally? And I would do yoga. I would do reflexology. I always love tea. I'm into candles. And then it was the lavender that I became curious about what's in it. So then that's when I said, well, let me figure out what's in this stuff that works. And then that's how I enrolled in a program for aromatherapy. Was that starting? I've always loved dance, right? And then that's when I started the workshops for the women. How do I bring them together? So it was finding all of these alternatives mm. that can help people, help myself in order for me to help other people to create that balance and the feelings of less stress. How do I get control of my anxiety? Um, and just how do I create that equilibrium? Something yes. I'm off, right? I'm mm -hmm. unbalanced. I'm stressed. You know, I feel anxious. Um, I don't sleep. Um, and just all the things I'm agitated, I'm angry, and I don't know why. So how do we bring this all together for women in a coaching capacity who may not necessarily need counseling? Right. And, and that's what it is. I'm a firm believer that everyone can benefit at some point in their lives from counseling, but everyone doesn't need counseling at a particular time and stage of their life. So Correct. how do you still service and support those people? you'll be able to support them as a coach, especially the people that I had relationships with because ethically I can't counsel them, right. but I can coach, but I can coach them. Yes. I love it. I love it. It's funny because I remember when like, so by trade, I'm a cybersecurity analyst. So I don't even have to tell you the level of stress that comes with that. And so when I realized that I had 
some things that were happening with me from a physical standpoint where I had to find something else. And I was also a dancer and I had to find something else because my body was so disrupted. My nervous system was off, off, off. And that's when I found yoga and meditation. And I did yoga and meditation for years before I started diving into aromatherapy. I began to dive into aromatherapy as a, as a way to help treat my migraines. And I just really began to really truly fall in love with it. So then I started to add aromatherapy in my yoga and in my meditation and sound healing classes. Mm -hmm. So I know how awesome adding these alternatives. And once you get that perfect magical mix, that little cocktail, listen, because <laughs> listen, Life. I don't want to go to school no more. Okay. I was tired of going to school. I did not want to go to school. And so I decided that I was going to go on a journey to become a yoga therapist. And so, that. yes. And so it does not have those ethical boundaries that a, 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 a licensed clinical social worker may have. And so, you know, I've always liked to walk to the beat of my own drum anyhow. So I don't like mm -hmm. <laughs> So when you sit with a client, someone new that's coming to you, like what are some of the first steps that you take to start to get them to just the right cocktail of what they may need? So some may need aromatherapy and some meditation. Some may need some talk therapy and some journaling. Some may, you know, it's so many different paths they can follow. So how do you determine what someone would need or how would a person even start to say, okay, I don't necessarily need counseling but I need a coach. I need somebody that's going to help me. Like, what are some of the signs that people can kind of pick up on and say, okay, I might need to look into some things here. Um, some of the things you want to look at is the duration, right? So right. how long have you been feeling this way? Okay. Right. Um, looking at what parts of your life are being disrupted, by what you're feeling and what you're experiencing. Okay. Um, and what are some of the symptoms that you're having? Okay. Are you saying that these things, if, can you sort of pinpoint in some ways, well, this is when it started um, based off of work. So in the past year, I've noticed that, you know, my sleep has been interrupted. I'm more agitated. I'm angry. I'm having difficulty concentrating, right? right? But are your symptoms um, sort of bordering those self-harm? Right. More depressed, right? Um, higher levels of anxiety that are rooted deeper than, oh, it's just being triggered when I have to go to work. Right. So that's kind of how you can sort of differ differentiate which might be a best approach for what a client may need is, is it there some mental health things that are going on? Or right. is it just more stress related, some mild anxiety because you're stressed, Got right? It. But is this anxiety rooted because you experience something right? and then you're triggered right? and that's what's causing the anxiety. So more out of fear and things of that nature. So, so yeah. Okay. Okay. So I have a question now. I'm going to tell you this question is probably going to be so loaded, but I want, listen. <laughs> so for us as black women, there are things that we are constantly seeing on social media that may be causing stress and anxiety. So would something like that be something that is more so going to need counseling or is that more of a coaching type of thing? Because we have so much pressure to be a certain kind of way and not be the angry black woman and things of that nature. And so like, how, like which way are, do we go with that? Because I personally feel like something like that can start out one thing and cause something completely different. Um, it depends on the person. Right. right. So it depends on what they're witnessing and what they're seeing and how they're being impacted by 
what they are taking in. So remember, everybody is going to um, perceive things differently. Like we can experience the same thing, but Mm -hmm. your perception of it and how you're impacted can be vastly different. Definitely. Um, in regards to how I receive it and how I take in the information that I'm receiving. So it really just depends on the person and how much they're being impacted. Are they internalizing it so much that it sort of dictates how they speak, how they act, how they behave? Or is it just something that they're seeing, they feel a little way about it, but then they can kind of just go on with whatever it is that they need to do. Right. And I think that would de- help determine what support would be needed, right? Right. What's the level, what's the depth of the impact versus someone who can just look at it, receive it, feel, you know, sad about it, feel angry, take it in, whatever the situation is, and then kind of just go on with their day, fine. But are we, is it someone that's internalizing? Right. Is something, once again, is something being triggered? Is there something deeply rooted that might be attached to childhood, might be attached to young adulthood, might... What's the attachment associated with how they are responding, which can also be a determining factor on the level of support that would be best for them at that particular time? So it's 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 more so about the response to these things that you're looking for when you're when someone is looking to work with you and saying, hey, I think I might need Mm -hmm. need a little extra support. Yeah. And you want to be very careful um, as um, especially if you're in the fields of mental health and then also coaching, because there are some similarities. Right. But we have to be very careful when we're saying, um, oh, you know, I coach people. Right. Yes. You want to be very careful with what you're coaching on. Yes. Because sometimes we can take on things that you're not technically trained to take on. And even if you did go through something similar Some things really need to be addressed by a counselor, a therapist, a psychiatrist, a psychologist. So you want to be very careful also who you're seeking the support from. And then also on the other end, who we are providing the support to. Absolutely. Are you trained to really support this person? Because we don't want to cause more harm. Absolutely. So to what they're going through. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more because nowadays, especially since COVID, everybody's a coach at something. And so you have to be careful about that. Like you said, especially when you're dealing with emotions and, you know, mental health, there's this thing of transference that a lot of people don't understand about like, and as a, as a counselor or a therapist or someone who's working in that realm, you do have to be very careful because those lines are so fine and can become so blurred that like you said, you'll wind up inadvertently sometimes. And I think that it's actually sometimes it's not really intentional. I think people just want to help. But like you said, they're doing more harm than good. So, So family, when you're looking for someone Make sure that that person is qualified to do what it is that you are in need of. And don't be afraid to say, hey, this is this this is not exactly what I need right now. It's nothing against you, but I need something a little bit different. Do you know somebody? And 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 out to other coaches that may be listening. Don't be ashamed to say, hey. That's not, that ain't my, that's not my wheelhouse right there, but I know somebody. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes. Cause even therapists as therapists, you're not, you shouldn't necessarily be seeing anyone that you're not able to support in the, in the capacity that they need it. Right. So if it is out of the scope of what you may specialize in, what you're familiar with, what you've learned, you should be referring them. Right. Right. So it's the same thing. We shouldn't be treating people that we, um, It's just out of our scope. Absolutely. So every guest that comes on the podcast plays a little game with me. You want to play? (laughs) Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's called this or that. And I'm just going to ask you a series of questions. You just tell me which you prefer. Okay. All right. Coffee or tea? Tea. Incense or candles? Candles. Fluffy towels or cozy sheets? (laughs) Mm, that's a good one i'm gonna go with the towels okay action film or rom-com action 
shower or bubble bath? Oh, that's hard. I'm going to go with the shower just because of the pressure. Okay. Beach or a mountain hike? Oh, gosh, these are hard. <laughs> ah, I'm going to go with the beach. Art museum or history museum? Art. <laughs> nice, nice. So yeah. I, I love playing that game because it stumps everybody all the time because they're like, dang, I never even thought about these things. And it's so fun to me. I think it's hilarious. So, and it's it's a game my kids have played, but they ask different questions. Mm -hmm. So before we wrap up this episode of the Melanin Wellness Podcast, please share with the audience how they can reach out to you if they want to connect. Or do you have any special workshops, offers, anything like that that's coming up that you would like to let our audience know about? Um, so I don't have anything coming up, um, but you guys can definitely connect with me on IG. My handle is I am shy, C-H-Y, white, W-H-I-T, like the color. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn, but I'm on LinkedIn as Cheyenne. So it's C-H-E-Y-E-N-N-E. -N -N -E. Last name is white, like the color. Um, and just connect. So if you feel that you are experiencing especially high levels of stress. So the information that I post on IG is mainly about stress, mainly about wellness and how we take care of ourselves as women. So if you feel that you are dealing with high levels of stress that you are drowning in and you want to figure out how to do I find balance in all of this that I'm mm -hmm. going through, please just send me a DM so we can connect. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Shy, for being on the show. Uh, y'all, we was having some technical difficulties at the beginning, but y'all don't y'all worry about that. Y'all not gonna even go hear that part. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I love this collaboration. I so enjoyed interviewing you. And I really hope that you might come back to the show again one day. Open for whatever the conversation is about. I anything that has to do with wellness. I'm Absolutely. here for all of it. I just my in relation to the speaker of life, lastly, it's just speaking life into those things that we feel are, are dying, that we feel are hopeless. So how do I just use my voice in order to support my sisters in those places that just needs a little cultivating and things of that nature? So I'm just here for it. That is so awesome. I cannot wait. Melanin Wellness family, thank y'all again for tuning in to another episode. You know I love y'all to life, all right? All of Shy's information will be in the show notes on how you can connect with her. Reach out to her, y'all. Interact, family. Listen, I bring these guests on here to give y'all the tools y'all need so that y'all can live well. I love y'all. Thanks for listening. And until next time, stay well. <laughs>